Hi, I'm Brian Finnemore. Welcome to Plum Lane Ministry, and we're back for our podcast. Well, today we're going to continue where we've left off. Uh, we're going to still be looking at the gifts in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 17. And what we're going to do is we're going to just take a moment to review here real quick. As we've been looking at the gifts, we've been trying to talk about the fact that the gifts that we see here in Ephesians 4 are the gifts of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are triumphal gifts, which means that when he was raised from the dead, these are the gifts that he gave back to his church so that the church would be mature and equipped. And as we've been looking at it, um, what we call contextually, it's following a pattern. And as I've tried to show out in, in other podcasts, is that this pattern uh, cannot be read into different times in history. It's a thought on how Jesus builds his church. And so we see that there are apostles and there's prophets. And today we're looking at the, the calling of an evangelist. Now, before we look specifically at what the scripture says about this, I want to take a moment and just help us review something here. Most of us would accept the idea that there are evangelists today because of what we, has been going on since the Reformation. But you have to remember that after Constantine was the ruler and set up Christianity as the national religion, Christianity went into what we would call confusion of basic doctrines of leadership. And what I mean by that is uh, they went and they took away apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers, and they put in priests, which there's no order for that as the leadership gifts in the New Testament at all. And as we had the Reformation, we've come back to the Scripture and said, now what does the Bible actually teach about leadership? And we see here in Ephesians is the clearest what the callings are. And so when we come to evangelists, we have to remember that really it's only been over the last 200 to 300 years that the church has accepted that there are actually evangelists. And I would say specifically in the 19th century that uh, the church had so many evangelists do so many mighty works that it was hard for them to refute it. But that doesn't mean that every generation doesn't have to deal with this scripturally. We happen to be in a time now where people struggle with apostles and prophets. That's because of what we call the foolishness of not taking the scriptures seriously, or people not teaching us what the Bible really says about certain things, or holding on to the traditions of men instead of what the scripture actually tells us. So our goal is to look at what the scripture says, and then just actually develop it so that we can actually learn it. And so... What we want to do is we want to go to uh, what we see in Ephesians chapter 4. And it tells us that these callings are given as gifts of men. The purpose of them is to equip the saints for the work of ministry until we reach the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Then it says, and some are evangelists. Now, I'm always asked this question, and I think it's a good question. It's kind of silly sometimes if you think about it, but... Are there men evangelists and women evangelists? Yes. How, how, can, how can that be? Because God calls whoever he wants. He doesn't play this game with it's a male or female. It's a divine calling that God has given somebody, and he's the one that gets to choose who he wants to be in ministry. Now, what we want to do is we want to start developing what we would call an evangelist. What is an evangelist? Well, it comes from the idea of a preacher of the gospel or the good news. Now, well, very quickly, we need to ask a question, what is the good news? Most people would say, well, it's Jesus dying on the cross, giving us eternal life. That is part of the good news, but really a succinct way of saying it is it's the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has provided in the atoning work of the cross. And so evangelists are actually coming to be the preachers of this news into a culture. In fact, most people would say that um, evangelist's job is to constantly spread seeds of the gospel, which I agree with. And so also, they, they're, they're thinking, now think how the, we're, we're talking about how does Jesus call people to be evangelists. What we need to do is we need to say, well, now how is Jesus an evangelist? Or how did Jesus model this? Well, I think it comes from the idea that uh, he talks about the harvest. There's a harvest coming. And that he wants laborers in the harvest. And I think for the evangelists, this means that their mentality is thinking of always grabbing in the harvest. They're not so much about building or trying to set up structure. They're more about just sowing the seed of the gospel to the nations uh, as the one of the functions they have. Another one of the functions that they carry is the idea of um, not only sowing the seed of this, 
but also equipping other people to learn how to do this. Now, the church has this really funny thing that once they learn how to function in the grace of one of these callings, they usually assume they're called to this. No, a functioning Christian functions with a measure of the apostolic, the prophetic, the evangelistic, the shepherding, and the teaching grace in their life. That's a fully functional Christian. Now, we know that there are people that are really called by the Lord to actually be evangelists. So let's, let's look at what they're at. Uh, an evangelist, remember, we made the distinction when we were talking about prophets, is everyone can prophesy, but a prophet or an, or an apostle, and even the case here with an evangelist, isn't someone that can do the function of it. It's someone who can equip other people to do it. So they have to be able to do it themselves and equip other people. And it truly is a calling to take a low place or a servant's place, which means that in the process of equipping, you're always dealing with trying to get people over what's keeping them in strongholds from reaching what God has called them to do. And so we see evangelists have to do that also. Um, also, we, we want to say that, um, let me give you a biblical example here of an evangelist, just for a moment. It tells us in Acts 21, verse 8, it says this. Uh, this is Acts, how the, the leadership gift was functioning in the early church. And it says, On the next day we left and came to Caesarea, and entered the house of Philip the evangelist who was one of the seven, we stayed with him. Now, here in Acts, is talking about, well, they're just traveling around, and they're, they're running now into evangelists, and they describe him as Philip the evangelist. So that, that means that this is a distinction that was given to him. Everybody knew this, and he was seen as doing that work, and so that meant that he actually uh, functioned as an evangelist as the early church saw him. Now, what we want to do is we want to also say... Um, Philip, in the beginning of Acts, after the church started getting persecuted in Jerusalem, had gone down into another region and started doing signs and wonders and preaching the gospel. And then Peter came down there so that they could release the Holy Spirit and establish the church in that region. So we see that uh, evangelists, at least as we see it in the book of Acts, they actually work with apostolic teams. Uh, that we find there's, there's three f ideas, or what I'd say, three functions that we want to see about Apostles, prophets, and evangelists, they're the the um, they're the the group that goes out or they're the the pro work or they're the catalyst that God sends to not only start a work, establish a work, and is, and release God's presence. They're what we call the actively in gathering ministry that goes out and builds church, establishes church, and gathers people in. And so Every time God's starting to do a new work, he usually sends an apostle or an evangelist to preach the gospel and start bringing people in. Now, the evangelist just wants to do that and train other people to do that. An apostle wants to do that and begin to uh, establish a work and put the DNA of the kingdom in people. And so an evangelist really is what we call a pure sower of the gospel. All right, so what? here are um, four things that we want to look at when we talk about evangelists. Uh, they want to actually train soul winners, which means they want to do it, and then they want to model to people how they can do it also. They they don't just get a thrill out of bringing people to the Lord. They want to see the, the labors that it actually talks about in Luke chapter 10, that they would come forth and actually go out into the harvest. So that's it. And I've been around evangelists. That's really how they think and function, and they just think on that level, harvest, all the time. Uh, they want to reach the lost through preaching the gospel and miracles or signs and wonders. And it's very important that we just take a moment here and say something. In the first four centuries of the church, the church never separated signs and wonders from preaching of the gospel. That came after the Constantine uh, function and the fourth century. And it's not biblical to say that we should just preach the gospel and not do signs and wonders because our model is Jesus, not different church leaders in different times in human history. Jesus did this. He modeled it for us. We should do this. And Jesus never preached the gospel and separated signs and wonders away, away from it, and we shouldn't either. Also, they want to work with apostolic teams and starting and establishing local churches. So think about this. Here's what we have in the day and age we live in. We have evangelists going out and doing these crusades, but not usually establishing church because they're just so interested in sowing seed. And so as we grow up in the body of Christ, 
as leaders, we actually have to come and say, well, let's do this strategically and with wisdom here. If we're going to go and bring a bunch of people to the Lord, we ought to be setting up churches, training pastors and teachers, establishing elders, all the things that actually create health. Because remember, Jesus is didn't raise this up so that we would look powerful or flashy. He's trying to bring people to him into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and get him to be functional disciples by the time he gets done. And that should be our goal also. And what we see is the leader, leaders in the body of Christ really don't work well with each other. So we just we have our group functioning with our leader and he only produces what his grace gifted to do. And because we don't include other leaders, we hamper what Jesus is doing in a location because of this kind of thinking, which hopefully the Lord will correct. Also, um, they, they not only want to establish churches, uh, it should be that they should establish church and then get on with preaching the gospel. Now, as a side note, when I first came into the kingdom, I was with um, people that did evangelistic outreach all the time. I, I would be say I have been um, greatly influenced by evangelists. And if you've not been around them, you'll find them. They're usually out there trying to lead people to the Lord, and they're usually very passionate, very focused, and, and their, their goal is to reach people. And they, they just have a grace and a skill to do it that if you don't aren't around this, you should be around it and watch him. Uh, the power of God comes on people and conviction hits them as people are preaching the gospel. Now remember, they believe also that the word is the standard, which it should be. The word is what pierces the heart up with the presence of the Holy Spirit to draw people into the kingdom of God. And so that's our focus of evangelists. And I just want to take you for, uh, sorry, I just want to thank you for joining us, spending some time with us as we talk about the calling of an evangelist. Now, as we turn our attention to the next podcasts that are going to be coming, I want you to begin to do like I am as we're going through this study. I'm spending time just reading the book of Ephesians and Ephesians chapter 4 specifically as we talk about these gifts because we need to know what God's word says and as we saturate with what was God's plan for the church, it gives us an ability to look through error in the day we live in and begin to ask serious questions and set up what Jesus actually was looking for. So hopefully this blessed you. We'll see you next time. And uh, when we do, uh, we'll begin our work on what is a pastor or a shepherd. And most people would say, well, that's easily defined. But we actually want to look at what the scripture says about this. And so I just want to thank you for stopping by and have a blessed day.